I'm Jay Rock Houston, and you're listening to Catacris Magazine. We can be found on the web at www.catacris.com. And our special guest today is legendary singer uh, Doro. Um, and Doro, um, that says it all kind of right there. You're kind of like Cher. You just need the one name, and everybody knows who we're talking about. <laughs> Hi, Jason. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for the nice introduction. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm doing it for such a long time, so everybody... Yeah, you know, know, they also they also refer to you as the metal queen. I mean, even um, probably the, the two oldest rock and females I know, um, especially metal-wise, have to be you and Lita Ford, you know? <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's so sweet. Well, just like, uh, if somebody says, oh, I like you, that's good. I don't yeah, yeah. Well, let's <laughs> like, get right into it, Dora, and talk about your new album coming out November um, 13th. It's called um, it's called Magic Diamonds, um, Rock Ballads and Rare Treasure. It's kind of like a best of, and, and you're really giving the fans, um, c- kind of give, giving us um, our, our money's worth, because um, I was reading the press release, and I was saying, I forget how many tracks are on this album, but it's like three-disc um, compilation, and... Um, it's like over four, at least four hours of music, so that's great. I mean, uh, you got enough material to kind of, I guess this would be the right time uh, to kind of um, do an album like this and with the lockdown and everything. So talk about your decision to put this out. <clears throat> yeah, actually, yeah, we had um, so many gigs and festivals and touring plans and, yeah, like to America tours, to European tours, Australia tours, South America tours, and then everything fell through. Uh, last time we played in the States was actually on the Mega Cruise, the Megadeth Cruise, mm-hmm. and, yeah, and then, and then when, when, we could see like it, it nothing works anymore. Then I went back into the studio working on a new album, and wow. then I went through all my archives and, and I had so many songs. I thought, yeah, I want to put all the best of. And actually, actually, at first I thought, yeah, maybe fifteen songs, and then it was twenty songs, wow, then wow. thirty songs, then forty, and then I maxed out the capacity of the CD and final, uh, and it's now fifty-six songs. And from all eras, from the old school, 80s era to the See, new that, that's stuff. See, that's what I, yeah. That's, that's what I love about the, the way you're putting this album out. It, it's not just like a greatest hits, because it's got rare tracks. It's got, it, it's got a little extra there for than people might have um, expected. I hear there's like a male version and a female version. You want to talk a little bit about that? around with having my own perfume since the early 80s, you know, since the early 90s, yeah. and now it's there, and there's a special box set, and you get the three CD set, and then a little scarf, and a perfume, and one is for ladies, and one oh, for wow. men, and True at heart, and it's it's probably hard to find because it's only on the limited edition. But definitely Amazon uh, Germany, Amazon.de, they still have it, and yeah, and it was just like a you know to have something special in yeah. the box set. I always love that, you know, for yeah. the collection. And, and I'm collection. a big fan of yeah. perfumes. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to see it. And, and how, how's the album? Um, I imagine you're getting great orders as far as the pre-orders right now, huh? Again, what? A lot of people, is there a pre-order going on right now? Like people can pre-order? Yes, Jason, yeah, there's a pre-order and uh, I think there's a special limited edition, there are little skulls, they look so, they look so nice. I think they're already uh, sold out, but yeah, yeah, I think there's not enough of them. You know, at first we thought, okay, it's yeah. all box sets and then 500 of these little skull edition, but yeah, yeah, people seem to like it and it really smells good. And if you're not a fan of perfume, <laughs> It's even nice in your collection, like the little bottles. They're so yeah, and you know, again, I, I'm an old school guy um, too. Uh, I I miss the days of you know. I love physical product. I love uh, packaging is always um, something I loved. You know, back in the day. Yeah. I, I love holding I CDs and looking at the liner notes and the artwork. So it's great that you have a package like this. Now let's get into some yes, of the. We still have vinyl yeah. as well. Uh, wow. The vinyl yeah. edition in, in, in color. One is clear and one is white, and and the poster and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. I love to have something yeah. in my hand, and look at it, and, and beautiful artwork. That's always important to me too. Yeah. 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 Now you got so many songs on here. I'd love to go over everyone, but let's let's get into some of the songs on here now. Um, we got to uh, um, talk about um, one of my all-time favorite songs you, um, of yours is All We Are. I mean, that, that goes back to the Warlock days from Triumph and Agony, and, and that's, um, that was one of your first like major hits, and, and I think that's a great rock anthem. So talk a little bit about um, that song, because that's, that's obviously an important song in your career. When we wrote it, we wrote it in, in New York City, it was in 87, yeah. and I could tell it had some magic, 
and then we actually got all our friends together and even some people off the streets we said hey you guys can you sing the background we have this cool song and then everybody was singing the heart out and yeah. when I saw that I thought oh man this should be the first singer and then we did this video in LA in the yeah. LA River Basin where Terminator 2 was filmed well. and we filmed video oh that was like man i felt like a million bucks i was standing up on the tour bus yeah. and like it was it was a cool story and yeah and and the video director was fantastic it was back in the day when everybody had like these huge video productions yeah. i think I, i guess like at least 60 people worked yeah. on that video and which in this day and age you, you can't do that anymore but yeah in the 80s there was it was awesome and yeah and then it became a big hit and yeah. mtv played it on heavy rotation i tell you everywhere we, we went on tour everybody sings all we are with us it's like it's still one yeah. of my favorite songs that's the reason why it opens the first cd the best of makes sense yeah and i mean I still have the best that, that was one of your biggest yeah. hits and, and like you said Uh, Dora, you are the metal queen, and um, there are a lot of um, female-fronted bands these days, like the Butcher Babies, and you know, in this moment, to name just a few. But um, you were the one that, like, with that song, I mean, you really proved, um, you know, women could really rock. You know, uh, I mean, the power of your voice, the power of that song. I mean, all these years later, it still resonates with your fans. You know. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, exactly. When metal is in your heart, you yeah. know, and, yeah, yeah, but yeah, but that song did it, and the whole record, it was called Triumph and yeah. Enemy, yeah, that was really, it was a big record, and, and I, I still love all the songs on it, and, oh, yeah, yeah I, there's not one filler song on it. Oh, it's so true, so true, and, and another thing is, I mean, like I said, it's like four hours of music to listen to, so it take it, takes somebody a while to listen to the whole thing, but it's definitely worth it, because yeah. you listen to all three CDs, and, and I'll tell you, you could you just see kind of a range of your vocal ability. I mean, everything from, like, something like, um, you know, All We Are to, um, you know, I, I Adore You, um, you know, and then even, like, uh, You're you're My Family. Um, another one I love was Kiss Me Like a Cobra. Um, talk a little bit about that song. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, yeah, this, this was a song, um, it was uh, on the Calling the Wild album, It was a really nice album because it was my first America release uh, in uh, 2000 again after, you know, Grunge well, was yeah. gone a little bit. In the 90s, it was really difficult and stuff because Grunge was taking over and we didn't get our records released anymore and yeah. therefore there was no tour. So it was a domino effect and Calling the Wild was the first release again and we toured with the legendary Ronnie James Dio and we had a great big American tour. It was three months long. We became great friends and wow. it was so awesome. And yeah, and the song Kiss Me Like a Cobra was the opening track. There were a couple of different versions floating around. Yeah. I think in America the song was called Terror Vision. But um, yeah, I, I love that song. I think it has a great hook. It's very, yeah, it's sexy as well. Sexy, exactly. That's that's, that's what I, I, I think of when I, when I heard that song, you know, for the first time last night when I was listening to this. And, um, And, you know, what you're saying about in the early 90s, grunge was taken over. Um, and that's true because even bands like Motley Crue were not selling like they once were. But the the true bands, like um, the true metal bands that do what they do, like you, Dor, you're still around. You know, grunge, some of the grunge bands have survived. But, um, you know, you've been doing this for um, decades now. So your, your fans stuck by you. So And that, that's, I think, again, just says what a talented um, you know, singer you are. And going back to the Warlock days, I wanted to ask you... Um, Your guitar player John Levin, that played on uh, *Triumph and Agony*, I believe. Um, have you watched um, what he's done since he's teamed up with uh, Dawkin? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, actually, man, he's a fantastic guitar player, and um, yeah, and, and I think he became a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, he's a lawyer too, entertainment no, lawyer. Yeah, yeah. So that's good in the music business. You know, I think that's pretty good when you know what's going on. Yeah. I would definitely recommend like, that everybody checks out the contract before you yeah. sign something. When we were young, like, you know, we signed contracts, we had no idea what was in yeah. it. So I think that that's cool that it became a lawyer. But he's a fantastic guitar player. Yeah. A super cool, super nice guy. And he played on our fourth majeure record. And oh, wow. Came out in eight, Okay. And yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I used to follow all my guys, and yeah, and, and our drummer uh, who played with us in '95. He's now the uh, drummer in Guns N' Roses, Frank Ferrer. Oh wow! And he was killer drummer, and ah, uh, yeah, and all these these guys, and and um, 
my uh, bass player from the Triumph and Agony era, in the Triumph and Agony time, uh, his name is Tommy Hendrickson. Yes. And he's now in Alice Cooper, and he's now a guitar player. Oh, wow, wow. Player. And so everybody, you know, yeah, did like fantastic. I'm so happy. And then you, you also played with and Bobby Ryan. Yeah. You also played with Bobby Ryan and Nelly, didn't you, who played in Rainbow? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. He's a great yes. drummer. Yeah, yeah. people and uh, and even like these uh, there are tons of duets on this album yeah and my first duet was with Lemmy and we did Love Me Forever great Motorhead tune song. now is that a new yeah yeah it's great it's, yeah. Uh, I love that song so much, so I wanted to record it, and we recorded it in LA with Bob Kulik, who oh. actually yeah, passed away recently, so sadly, yeah. yeah, yeah, and he played uh, guitar on it, and Eric Singer, the Kiss drummer, he oh, played course. drums on Love yeah. Me Forever, oh, wow. so, so it's great. We are all one family. It's so it's so awesome. And was that yeah. was that recorded like for one of those tribute albums that Bob produced, or because? Uh, no, actually, it was uh, uh, um, produced for the Calling the Wild album oh, okay. in, in the year. We did two duets. Uh, one song was called Alone Again, which Lemmy wrote on his acoustic guitar and he yeah. played it to me in the hotel room. I thought, oh, wow, that sounds amazing. And then he said, you want to record it? I said, yes, let's let's do it. Mm. And then he said, shall we do another song? And I said, oh, Lemmy, I love, love me forever so much. And he said, oh, let's do it. So, so we recorded two songs uh, for Calling the Wild. And then my last duet was actually on the Raise Your Fist album and it was called It Still Hurts. And yeah, and I was, oh, Lenny was my best friend. Yeah, Bobby I know. I, I was going to ask you about that because you and him go way back. I mean, um, you, I mean, we, we knew he was sick for a while, but you must have been just, um, you know, just um, over overcome with grief when you heard he had passed away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was at, at the funeral and like, oh, man, it was like, yeah, yeah. I saw him a few weeks before. He was on tour, and but he looked very thin. Yeah. He lost so much weight. And That's I thought, great. oh, man, I hope everything everything goes well. And, and sometimes I, you know, sometimes I got a phone call from some friends and yeah. I said, hey, Lemmy is in town or he's in Berlin. He loved Berlin so much in Germany and he had some doctors working, you know, on, on, yeah. on his health. And then I always flew there and, you know, we spent some days together and, you know, and then he was always fine. After a couple yeah. of weeks, you know, he was totally, you know, in good shape again. And yeah, yeah, another yeah. tour, another tour. Yeah. I was, but uh, he was, oh man, he was, so, he was so awesome. And yeah, you know, I and this is a great tribute to your friend, Lemmy, because um, when people bring up Motorhead, a lot of times they, they go like to Ace of Spades, oh, what, what a great song, what a great album. But if you really yeah. get into the Motorhead catalog, I mean, it's all great, you know, and um, Lemmy was really a, um, underrated, I think, for his, his songwriting. Love Me Forever, that, that was like one of the perfect tunes to kind of um, do with him, you know what I mean? To kind of shine a light on his songwriting, I think. <clears throat> totally, totally, and, and man, he was a, a fantastic lyricist. Oh too. yeah, singer. <laughs> I love his lyrics, and ah, oh, yeah, so so soulful and so deep, and uh, yeah, of course I love all this, <laughs> you know, like, especially the songs of Azos Day so much. And I just yeah. uh, covered the song on the album of uh, Dave Ellison. Oh wow! And, uh, and on it as well, and it was Love Me Like a Reptile, oh. which was on Ace of Spades as well, and we did uh, the Queen song, She a Heart Attack, and so many people played on it, like all kinds of musicians got together, wow. and oh, that was great, but wow. yeah, singing a motorhead song, oh, of course. You know, now, I gotta ask you about a few more of the covers, now, you do a great, um, speaking of Ronnie Dio, you do a great Dio cover, Egypt, The Chains Are On, uh, now, that was, yeah. that was the one you did, isn't it, for um, the Dio tribute album? Okay. Yeah, great Actually, I, One time a magazine uh, asked me if, if I want to participate in a tri tribute album, and I said, oh yes, I would love to yeah. sing my favorite song, Egypt, yeah. and, and then I did, and then I met uh, Ronnie in uh, 2000, and um, wow. he had like a listening party for his Magica album, and I had a new record company and the guy on the ring, he said, hey, you want to go to the listening party? I said, yes, certainly. So I went, you know, for... Yeah, like listening to the record. Wow, wow, yeah, yeah. Or like, hi to you. And then he came up to me and said, oh, I love your version of Egypt. And I said, really? He said, yes, I love it. And then to make a long story short, a couple of weeks later, we were on tour together. And there was that, yeah, it was in 2000. Yeah. And it was a long tour, three months. And, oh, and then we became great, great friends 
like uh, we were on tour before in 87 yeah. but uh, we didn't have so much time to talk but yeah, yeah but in 2000 that was that was awesome oh yeah that, that's we're cool so you know to be on tour again yeah. too that was He's such yeah. a powerhouse vocalist. I mean, I'll never forget seeing him play, sing with Black Sabbath for the very last time. And um, little tiny guy, you know, he's not very tall on stage, but I mean, but the powerhouse voice was just coming out of this guy, you know, and, and it was amazing. And um, now I, I got to ask you about two more songs before, before we um, before we go now. Breaking the Law, great cover of that. And I'll tell you, Dora, what I what I loved about your cover of that is it's it's that great classic Judas Priest song we all know and love. But you really dorrowed it up, meaning, you know, you sounds quite different from the priest version. So was that something intentional? Because I tell you, in any case, it, it's, it came out really great, I think. It stands out. Oh, good. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah actually, it's a duet, and um, it's a duet with Udo Dirk Schneider. We worked together at uh, that time, and I um, sang a song on his album, and then I said, hey, Udo, you want to work on, on this album? I mm -hmm. did an album with orchestra. It was called Classic Diamonds. And I had this version of... Um, uh, yeah, breaking the law, and I thought, man, that sounds really awesome. So oh, I asked yeah. Udo if he <clears throat> wants to do a duet, and uh, it was actually to say thank you to Judas Priest because it was my first tour that took us out in '86. Oh wow! That was the time when I quit my job because yeah. I knew I wanted to do only music, and it was the best tour. And and Priest, they were my favorite band, so you cannot imagine it meant so much to I me. I bet, yeah. We got treated like gold, and yeah, that was the first tour, Priest. And then second tour was Wasp, and third tour was Ronnie James Dio, and, and then more than I had sex, and I, I couldn't ask for more. And in the States, it was, it was Megadeth. And I tell you, I, yeah, I'm, I'm so lucky, and yeah, I don't know what I did, but I, yeah, I got tons of, like, you know, like okay, all, then, all my dreams came yeah. true. And then That's doing great. duets with Lemmy or going on tour yeah. with Lemmy, and oh, God, yeah, I... Yeah, I'm, I'm a happy baby. I'm and thank, thank God that you got to record that stuff with Lemmy before he passed away. You know, we got that stuff you yeah. know, now forever, and you're gonna get it on this great collection. So if you're a Doro fan, go out and get this um, November 13th. But I also got to ask about the track that ends the whole thing, which is a great cover of Metallica's "Nothing Else Matters." Talk about your decision to cover that, because again, on that, you really made the song yeah. your own, and and it, it, it sounds great. <laughs> Yeah, you like it all good. Yeah, yeah. yeah another uh, magazine asked if, if I want to participate in a tribute album. And I said, oh, yes. And Metallica was one of my favorite bands as well. We actually played together many times in the early, early 80s when their album Kill Em All was just out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then nothing else matters. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I just tried and I thought, oh, yeah, that sounds good. So, yeah, it was for another tribute. And, yeah. yeah, and I, and I, I was not, reading on Blabber. Yeah, I was reading on blabbermouth.net today you were talking about this about metallic and you were saying that you'd actually met cliff burden back in the day what a nice can, can you believe it it's been um just this year 2020 marks the 34th anniversary since his death it's like it's so it's so unreal it's so yeah. unreal and i tell you yeah it, it was great to 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 do this best of album because all these great memories came back from yeah. the early 80s, the old school stuff. And then, you know, when it all started, there were no rules, nothing, no security, no sound limits. You could just yeah. do whatever you wanted and, and meet all these great bands, you know, who, who just had like their first records out. My first gig was actually, yeah, it was a heavy sound festival. It was a big festival with yeah. Slayer and Venom and Metallica. When they played on the festival in the early 80s with us and so we played with Metallica it was like it was so it was so fantastic we were all great friends we all got along great yeah, yeah. it was yeah it was all tight and it still is and yeah that, that's great and, and, and you, you seem to be one of those musicians that um, like when these bands hook up with them and they meet you that they, they stay friends for life that, that that's great because a lot all too often these bands are like they compete with one another so I, I dig that um, you're like that and, and I gotta tell people I went on Amazon to just uh, check out you know the price of this. It's it's pretty reasonable for especially when you're considering all you get in the box set. It, it's um it's pretty reasonable. I, I think it's well worth getting. You're definitely giving the fans their money's worth. Now let me ask you about a couple more of the tracks. You do a duet also with um Peter Steele from Typo Negative. The call the yeah. song is Descent. That's pretty cool. Talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> yeah, I see. Oh man, Pete was such a nice guy. He was so tall. I tell you, you yeah, know, yeah. I always felt like a little kid. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he was a gentle giant. He was super cool, and 
yeah, we did the song on our record Fight, yeah. and I loved it. I loved his voice on it, and like, ah, oh, I think it, it's one of the coolest songs on this album, and she was super sweet. Yeah, and he, like you said, he was, a, he was kind of a giant, and that, from what I understand, that's what um, why he died so young, is it had something to do with um, him being so huge that he had like an overgrown heart or something, and that... That caused his early death, unfortunately, but um, he, we got all this great typo negative music and we got this to kind of remember him by, so that's great. Now, there's also a track on here you did with um, Blaze Bailey, who most people know as a singer that was briefly in Iron Maiden replacing uh, Bruce Dickinson. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. See, we toured together many times, and actually my guitar player from Italy, he played with Blaze Bailey, so yeah, and then he always came to my, we always like celebrated big anniversaries so, um, like shows and then wow. Blaze came and sang Bad Blood and, and uh, we played one time the orchestra shows we did Fear of the Dark together oh man that was so uh, it was so yeah. awesome and wow. he's a great guy and a great voice and yeah, yeah and, and yeah he, he was cool he was cool and yeah and I thought you know man when he was in Maiden, it was so huge, you mm -hmm. know, packed arenas and stuff. Yeah. And then I thought, yeah, I want to, you know, I, I want to still let people know that Blaze is a great singer too. And, yeah, yeah, know, of great, course, yeah. You know, can't compare singers, you know, I think Bruce Dickinson is awesome. But Blaze, he was doing a great job too, so, yeah. and super nice guy. And his music, yeah, it's yeah, nice, that does, so he I definitely, guess you want to have it included here. Yeah, he definitely deserves to be celebrated, you know, so. Great that you, now I, I imagine you know we get like four hours of music on this box set, but um, I imagine that you, you included so much or stuff that you wanted to that you you couldn't. So um, that, that's 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 just amazing. But let me ask you because um, and then we'll wrap this up because I know you're very busy today doing these interviews, Dora. But I got to ask you because I'm such a huge Kiss fan. I know um, that your Doro solo album that came out in the '90s. Gene Simmons um, was a producer on that, and you had guys like Tommy Thayer and Pat Reagan play on there. My my question: What was it like working? Uh, with Gene Simmons on that album because I, I heard that you're such a Kiss fan yourself. <clears throat> hey, hey, totally. I, I tell you, you know, being a big fan, it was so it, it was so mind blowing, and I never thought that I would actually meet Kiss. And yeah, then yeah. when Gene was in the studio working with us, and he was so so nice, he was so caring, mm -hmm. and he was really cool. And and you know, I was always like. My knees were always shaking every day yeah. when I went into the studio. Yeah. You know, I couldn't get over it. I was like, "Wow!" And then uh, singing, that was always like interesting because Gene said, "He said, Doro, just look into my eyes when you sing." And I said, "Gene, I can." He said, <laughs> wow. "Why?" Yeah. He said, "Because you're Gene Simmons." Wow. And he said, "Yes, so." And I said, "No, it makes you don't me, it makes me all nervous <laughs> and stuff." Wow. He said, "No, oh, just look into my eyes." And then I always turned around and. I, you know, I was such a big fan, and it was so great. It was, yeah. you know, one one thing in a lifetime. But but he was a great producer as well. And he yeah. was really caring, and yeah, I learned a lot from him. Yeah. And he was a school teacher and oh, yeah. before he was kiss, and he had a great way in teaching his stuff. And yeah. it was awesome. I and, and, and I gotta ask you too. You, you included two of his songs on the album. One was a song called "Something Wicked Comes," which I know is a tune he originally wrote for Kiss that um, they never recorded and then um, you also chose the cover of a Kiss song um, Only what? You which is off of yeah. music from The Elder which uh, is not one of the more popular Kiss albums it's probably the one that sold the least but I, I dug the fact that you chose to cover such um, a song that maybe wasn't such a hit for them you know what I mean because um, you kind of yeah. once again you made the song your own and, and a lot of people hearing that song they think it's a Doro song you know <clears throat> And oh god, and um, the chords—it's like oh, I think it's it, it's magical, it's magical, and yeah. And there was another song I love so much. We uh, recorded it for the fight album, and it was Legends yeah. Never Die, yeah. and I love it too. I I love his songwriting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm still a big Kiss fan. I mean, as, so, as a Kiss fan, know, I've heard a lot of these uh, unreleased demos they've got floating around. He, he's a great songwriter. Yeah. He's, he's got so many great songs, like you say, that they haven't even recorded or released. It's just amazing. And it, it's great to have an artist like you that he can kind of go to you and say, hey, uh, would you like to record any of my songs? Because you did, you did a great um, job with that album, those songs. And, and, and i got to ask you, Doro, um, uh, what, what are your plans? Because, see, this is a great album to come out during the lockdown when we have all this COVID stuff going on. In, any idea, like, do you have any plans... Um, to do any touring behind this, or is this kind of like to wait and see 
when you're able to do live shows again. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. Next year. So, um, yeah, so we're hoping that next year everything will kind of go back to normal. Yeah. We did a couple of drive in shows. Oh, that's cool. It was a yeah. lot of fun. It was totally different. But See, what was, I dig about that, you know? Adventure. Yeah, instead of shutting everything down, um, a lot of bands, like you say, drive in shows, that's becoming the new thing. Uh, streaming stuff on yeah. uh, on the internet, that's, that's becoming. Uh, uh, something different, but I, I dig that. That um, instead of saying, "Oh, we're not going to do anything," we're, we'll we'll find a way around that. You know. Absolutely, absolutely, and and you know, and it was a new challenge. And at first, I wasn't sure if it would be okay, but it was great. It was not like a normal show, like a normal yeah. test, but it, it, we still had so much fun. And you know, when we played a headbanger, I said, "Okay, let me see you shake your car." Like, <laughs> yeah. No tomorrow, and then people were shaking their cars, and I thought, "Man, almost." Cars were flying, it was great, and they were honking the horns, and it sounded louder than any PA system I've ever heard, so it was, it was yeah. cool, and it, it was great, and of course, it's not to compare with like a normal thing, but yeah. it's better than nothing, and exactly. you know, we recorded a couple of nice things on, on this uh, one drive-in show, for example, Love Me in Black, that's one of my favorite songs, and I think it came out so good, such a nice version that's on the Magic Diamonds as well, so, uh, yeah, and the other live songs there from our last tour in 2019, the wow. Forever Boys for the United to Awaken, hear all the fans and stuff, and you know, yeah, singing yeah. along and acting and that energy, but the drive-in shows, it had a different kind of magic, so, yeah. so it was great, but yes, I would love to, to go on tour again, of course, yeah. and you know, we were up for the rainbow, uh, yeah. the, the anniversary uh, oh, gig, wow. Maybe. but yeah. I hope we can do that next year, yeah. and yeah, and then a new record is coming out probably next year, we're working on it, there are right. already six songs done, I think they're song really good, oh, the first yeah. song was called Brick Wall, we put it out a couple of months ago, but yeah, a new record next year, and then hopefully a full tour worldwide, and yeah, oh, wow. and so, yeah, yeah. stay positive, whatever, whatever will be, yeah. I, I try to make the best out of it. Oh, and, yeah. That's yeah. all you can do. Well, one, one last thing I wanted to ask you about, because I was reading on um, your Wikipedia that, um, that, that you were kind of, um, talk about like kind of how the band Warlock um, kind of fell apart, and um, you, you were kind of forced to call it Doro. Was it that just because um, was a lawsuit brought against you, or did you just decide to break it up because the original band members were no longer involved? <clears throat> no, we, we, there, there was a big uh, war about the name. Oh. Somebody she really stole our name. Wow. And, and then we thought, okay, we would get it back. We went to court, and that was the first time that I felt in court, you know, sometimes uh, people are out of their minds, and yeah. then we didn't have the money to go back, of you know, to to, to fight. Uh, one, uh, it, it was terrible. And then I thought, okay, let's let's name it Doro for two years, yeah. and then we go back to Warlock. And that didn't take two years; it took twenty years. So I got the rights to the name Warlock back. But oh yeah. man, it was like, yeah, that's the music business. Yeah, we we, we know who it is. I mean, you think that's bad? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you heard the story about Don Dock, and he couldn't even uh, call his band Dockin for for a while because other guys were. Soon him over his yeah. own name. He's like, hey man, that, I, that's the name I was born with. You know, and they're trying to take yeah, it away. Man, yeah, I tell you, I tell you, yeah, so many bands went through that. And, you know, when you're a musician, you yeah. only care about the fans and touring and the new song and new record and the business end of it. It's sometimes, it's sometimes really yeah. tricky. And, you know, and other people, you know, when they smell a little bit of tiny success, then it, it, they. They lose their mind. They try to know? rob. They try to rob you blind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're going to end on this door. I just want to tell people once again to get the new um, best of box set by Doro. It comes out November thirteenth. Um, it's called Magic Diamonds, Rock Ballads, and Rare Treasures. And you're going to love it all. But I, I really love the rare, rare treasures. You know the extra bonuses like we were talking about yeah. those duets and with, with Udo and you know um, Blaze Bailey. So check all that out. And, and a great cover of um, Breaking the Law. People got to really. Uh, Check that out, and nothing else matters. Um, and I just want to end on this: if you're a Doro fan, not only go pick up the new album, uh, pick up the new album when it comes out, but Doro's also got a um, pretty cool YouTube uh, channel. I was checking out, and it's got everything to do with Doro Pesh that you can even imagine. So, if you're a fan, go check that out. Th thanks again, Doro. As you can tell, I'm a fan. I, I love talking to. So, um, thanks for doing this. Okay, bye bye. Have you have a good day. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, and I wish everybody the best. Stay healthy, stay metal, and.